Thank you all. Good morning and welcome. I'm delighted and deeply humbled that you're joining us for today's celebration. Welcome and thank you, Governor Mills, Director Cordova, Chair Irwin, and members of the University of Maine System Board of Trustees, who I could see out there before, but now it's difficult to see from here. Um, Ambassador Dana, University of Maine Faculty Senate President Townsend. Thanks to Chancellor Page, Jim, your wisdom, support, and even the mathematical conversations we have are invaluable. Thank you to my University of Maine System colleagues and fellow presidents who are here. To the University of Maine Board of Visitors Chair Owen McCarthy and to the BOV members, I want you to know how much your leadership and sound advice matter for this university. It is wonderful to have Congressman Golden here and representatives from our congressional delegation. Thank you. Friends from the National Science Foundation, I appreciate that you made your way to Orono. I imagine there is no snow left in, Arling in uh, Alexandria now, so enjoy it while you're here. My family is here and have been introduced, but I'd like to offer special gratitude to my husband, Rick, who could maybe wave. I can't, there you go. okay, right. <laughs> Rick's patience and willingness to be flexible have been extraordinary, as I made career changes that took our family to lots of places and meant lots of moving trucks and my love to our children. You also need to wave now. Please wave Joe Mundy. <laughs> Joe Mundy and Sarah Jones, who as you've heard, will be getting married this summer. And to see you. Okay. <laughs> Beth, Beth Mundy. <laughs> and Adri Mundy. You ground me and remind me that my main job is and always has been being a mom. To my brothers, sister-in-law, cousins and cousins-in-law, friends and colleagues who've come here to be with us today, thank you all. To our faculty and staff, to the deans and directors, to members of the president's cabinet, to our wonderful alumni, you all make our university the vibrant and dynamic place that is the college of our hearts always. Thank you. Fellow presidents and delegates, we at UMaine are grateful for your presence and the reminder of the traditions and interconnectedness in higher education. UMaine Presidents Emeriti Peter Hoff and Sue Hunter, thank you for being here. Your impact on UMaine continues on, and I assure you that we are building on all that you have established. Your friends and colleagues here are surely pleased to see you. So am I. The planning committee for the inauguration week events has been fantastic, working even now, I'm sure, behind the scenes. Thanks to Danny Williams for his leadership and to all of you for your creative, thoughtful, and hard work. And thanks to all of our student performers today who have enhanced this celebration so very much. Thank you. And students, you are the real reason that we are all here. The university is about you, and you are at the center of this celebration. I'm glad you're joining in. So to all in the audience here today, thank you for coming to Orono. And for those who are unable to be here, thank you for joining us via the live stream. So you thought it was a whole speech about thank yous? Actually not, I'll move on, um, but I am very grateful. I'm thrilled to be the president of the University of Maine, which includes our regional campus, the University of Maine at Machias. Being president is an honor that comes with sometimes daunting responsibilities and always meaningful rewards. Director Cordova, in a speech that she gave a few months ago, characterized her work at NSF as exciting, exasperating, enchanting, and wonderful. And that description really works for me here in this position, too. On reflection and preparing these remarks, I realize that the honor, the responsibilities, and the rewards all stem from the fact that the University of Maine is the flagship university within the University of Maine system. We have a distinctive place as the state's only public research university. We have important obligations to the state of Maine, and we are fortunate to have had consistent and wonderful support from our state leaders. Our origins are as a public land grant university, meaning that we work with the people, the businesses, and government of the state of Maine to advance our well-being together. I think about these responsibilities every day and am so proud of how well our university does in enacting them. President Abraham Lincoln signed the Morrill Act in 1862. The bill was developed by a New England leader, Representative Justin Morrill from Vermont. And then we were founded in 1865 as the Maine State College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts. 154 years later, the University of Maine continues to fulfill the agriculture mission for today and for tomorrow. In true land-grant spirit, the applied and basic research that goes on at the university evolves, 
and now includes food sciences, fisheries, and aquaculture, rural economic development, and much more in the agriculture areas. I received an email from one of our main vegetable growers who runs a small farm. It opened with, I want to tell you some good news. That's like the good kind of email. Like to see those? Um, he had participated recently in a hackathon event at UMaine. The theme was to hack a piece of technology that would be useful for small-scale agriculture. And the event was held in our hackerspace lab in the Memorial Union. It was sponsored by the America East Conference Academic Consortium. And the email writer is a UMaine engineering alum using his education to survive in small-scale agriculture. These connections happen all the time here, and I'm so delighted to be a part of them. Today's expanded version of the mechanic arts, the other piece of our original mission, thrives in the university as well. We are hoping to be able to break ground next year for the awesome new engineering education and design center. This is due in large part to the planning and creative ideas of our faculty, students, and staff, and to the support of so many very, very generous donors, and to our partnership with the state of Maine, which provided the debt service. Maine will be able to continue to count on the University of Maine to prepare the engineers who are ready to define tomorrow for our state. Public education is one of our nation's and one of Maine's greatest public goods. As a product of public education myself, and as someone who has spent most of her career in the public sector, I have deep roots and commitments to its promise. Public education to a nation, a state, a family, or a student is about opportunity, new horizons, meeting people different from ourselves, challenging ideas, and finding our passions for learning. What better place in public education is there to be than the University of Maine? In his book, Designing the New American University with William Debars, Michael Crow writes that research universities, quote, represent our best hope for the survival of our species. That's the daunting part. But in my short time here, I am confident that we are getting it right at the University of Maine. This is a place full of created, committed, collaborative people working to make Maine and the world a better place. I believe this because in just a few short months, I have seen how rich the University of Maine is. On a beautiful day last summer, I made a visit to the Darling Marine Center overlooking the Damariscotta River. I heard about the fascinating research projects of undergraduates, not only from the University of Maine, but from universities and institutions across the state in partnership with graduate students, postdocs, and faculty in our marine sciences programs and others. They were working on applied problems with lobsters, clams, crabs, and oysters. I hadn't read that out loud, it sounds like a menu, but it was actually <laughs> really nice science. I was fascinated and could have spent all day talking to them about their posters. Later in August, I had conversations with our wonderful new class of Mitchell scholars. I could see the hope and aspirations of prospective engineers eager to go back to their hometowns and help shape the future in Maine, and of aspiring psychologists wanting to help people through music therapy, and so many others with equally inspirational hopes and dreams. And I got very good advice about places to check out in Maine, Mount Katahdin, Baxter State Park, Acadia, and Old Orchard Beach. I would like to summarize my observations in three words, connections, convergence, and commitment. About connections. We talk about being from away and the two degrees of separation in Maine. I'm very grateful that the governor said, welcome home. Somehow these notions of being from away and the two degrees of separation are in play at the same time here. My experience in being from away in New Hampshire really isn't that far away, but that doesn't work <laughs> to convince anyone. My experience is that that doesn't mean you won't be included, welcomed, and brought into exciting things that matter for Maine. From the membership on various boards and groups, to being made an honorary master gardener volunteer, to the wonderful student who came to my office hours pretty much just to welcome me and to check on whether I was feeling included, given their commitment to an inclusive campus. To faculty inviting me to visit classes and speak with students, I am being connected here. My father, whom we lost a long time ago, helped me with connections. After high school, his journey took him from his immigrant parents' home in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to Castine, Maine. He was in Maine Maritime Academy's class of 1947. His stories of that time made it clear that he was welcomed in this state. And the names of his lifelong friends from Maine are family names now that I encounter still today, 75 years later. It's a connection. And about convergence. Universities are places where it is OK and expected to be focused on trying to understand, explain, debate, predict, and improve our very complex world and to create the works of art, literature, and music that make our world wonderful and push us to think and interpret. 
At UMaine, I am delighted to see that this sense of discovery and of creative expression abounds across our faculty and our students. And that I expected. But one of my most exciting discoveries here is how skillfully our faculty weave their commitment to research, discovery, and creative scholarship into their teaching of our students from Maine and beyond every day across the campus. Our undergraduates are working on phage, phage genomics, conducting interdisciplinary research to better understand food and waste systems and to improve them. They are learning history through geographic information systems and digital humanities. In courses from the social sciences to business, students are engaging in real world research problems. For those of you interested in learning more about this, I invite you to what I hear is one of the most exciting UMaine events each year, though I must admit we've had some very exciting moments in athletics this year as well. This is the 2019 UMaine Student Symposium, sponsored by our Center for Undergraduate Research. It'll be held on April 10th at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor. Several hundred students will be sharing their work. This is a chance to see your land-grant university in action. Related to all this, I would argue that convergence is thriving here. This term, when applied to research, according to the National Science Foundation, means, quote, solving vexing research problems, in particular complex problems focused on societal needs. It entails integrating knowledge, methods, and expertise from different disciplines and forming novel frameworks to catalyze scientific discovery and innovation. At UMaine, social scientists, oceanographers, and climatologists are doing work on climate change that is important for understanding and mitigating conditions in our changing globe. Chemical engineers, civil engineers, biomedical engineers, physicists, and others are collaborating on wood product-based composite materials to be used everywhere from buildings to bridges to bone replacements. Anthropologists, earth scientists, and educators are developing courses to help students learn about the role of indigenous science in understanding the world. Oyster fishermen, shellfish biologists, and mathematicians work to understand issues of current flow and harvesting. All are working in the convergent land-grant tradition to help make Maine the best state in which to live, learn, and work in the coming years. Finally, I want to highlight commitment. I see this in our loyal alumni who come to our campus throughout the year and remain involved with their university. You come to cheer on our black bear athletes, and you come to share your expertise and offer your generous support. And many of you work here. We are grateful for all that you do. As a university, we have groundbreaking research and development in floating offshore wind technology, demonstrating commitment to solving the challenge of renewable energy. We have committed staff, such as those who came together on a chilly evening a couple of weeks ago to restore electricity to the campus. At the University of Maine, we are connected, convergent, and committed. So what about the future? My vision for UMaine is grounded in what we are today, an outstanding university situated within a wonderful system with special attributes here. We are committed to each other and to Maine. We converge to solve wicked problems, and we connect through learning, scholarly work, and partnerships. Governor Mills, in her inauguration speech in January, said, streams, like the people of Maine, change direction on occasion to find the best way forward. Here at the University of Maine, we are constantly seeking the best way forward through our campus-wide comprehensive efforts, our first-year success initiative, our strategic vision and values project, and the University of Maine system research and development plan. And you all seek the best way forward every day in the interactions between students in a lab or staff working in the union or faculty discussing their best ideas about teaching. In all of this, we are looking to define tomorrow together by finding the best way forward for the university, for the system, and for the state of Maine. I am very pleased to be here and to connect, commit, and converge with you. Thanks all. <laughs>